Hey guys, you might remember us from Gigi Magazine. Um, we now have a podcast for teen girls and for kids, which boys and girls. We're about to record um, an episode for the kids and I'm actually going to transform into Poppy. She's the host and one of the, and the character I play. Hello, boys and girls. I'm so glad you could come along with us today. Are you ready to see what's in my glitter box? Oh, I can't wait. Come on, come and have a look. There are really exciting news um, of things and projects that have happened within a year since the last creative conference. I'm going to say ebooks, audiobooks, libraries, uh, podcasts. It's, it's amazing how God has directed um, our path and made it clear to mm. what we want to focus on and grow. And we are just so excited to share this with you. You know, we do this because we are deeply passionate about our girls and our kids. You know, things out there unfortunately are not uplifting. They lift them depressed, um, unfortunately suicidal, and there's no hope for them. But we want the literature, the audios, the stories to lift them up and find their truth, their worth in God, and know that there's you know, hope out there and, and a better future for them. Good afternoon, everyone. It's really great to be here. Um, before we start, I think in true uh, Gigi podcast fashion, we're gonna start with a story. So kids, if you're out there, you can listen. And we have a story for you. It actually comes out this month, so you're getting a bit of a sneak peek of something that hasn't been released yet. Okay. There was a war in Eleanor's country. Big airplanes flew above as the sky started to go dark one Sunday night. They zoomed through the sky and threw bombs to the tiny, colourful houses below. Boom. Hide! Eleanor's papa cried out, and in a hurry, all her brothers and sisters and mum and dad rushed to hide under beds, tables and chairs. Eleanor's heart beat fast in her chest. She was afraid. Boom. Another bomb exploded nearby. Kids, you need to pray for God's protection, her papa instructed. His voice drifted from his hiding place and floated to Eleanor's ears and her siblings. Everyone nodded. Eleanor closed her eyes and prayed to Jesus. Dear Lord, please protect us from bombs and keep us all safe. In Jesus' name, amen. As soon as she prayed, a peace settled in her heart. She knew that God was by her side. Hiding with her was her mama. Eleanor hurried and buried her head in her mama's shoulder as yet another bomb boomed closer. She covered her ears and hid deeper under the table. Will this ever stop? She wondered. Eleanor closed her eyes, and for a moment she imagined she was outside playing in the green fields with her little black poodle Bella running behind. She would throw the ball, and Bella would run back and get it. Eleanor loved her little dog. She hoped she was safe under the bed where she had gone to hide. Boom! The sounds of explosions continued. It felt like it was going to be a very long night. Eleanor prayed again. Please, Jesus, help us. Then she had an idea. Mama, she said in a whisper, could you tell me a story, please? Her mama hugged her close, nodded, and began to tell her one story after another. Boom, came another sound in the distance. Zoom, planes flew above. But Eleanor listened to her mama's stories with intent. Suddenly, in the middle of the story, Eleanor's head shot up. What was that sound? It's raining, her papa exclaimed. Her mama grinned. Her brothers and sisters clapped, but Eleanor frowned. Why is everyone happy, she asked. Because when it rains, the bombing planes can't see and they have to go home. Her mama kissed the top of her head. Eleanor's eyes rounded. Oh, so no more bombs tonight. That is correct. Her papa came to pull her and her mama out from under the table. We need to thank God for taking care of us, he said. Eleanor ran towards the bedroom and brought Bella from under the bed. Come, Bella, we are going to pray. Guess what? No more bombs for tonight. We are safe. She grabbed her little black poodle and twirled around. Her laughter and the dog's barks echoed around the house. So 
I'm Steph from Gigi Ministry, and this is my sister Steph. And the reason, <laughs> my sister Esther, that just shows you how nervous I am up here. Um, but the reason we wanted to share this story is because this is the why of Gigi podcast, because um, Eleanor is actually Esther, and this is something my family went through um, back in their country. So as a little girl, um, I remember that we went to, uh, through the war, Steph was, wasn't even in the picture then, but um, the rest of us were. And I remember that um, for me, stories were a way to, because I, I used to suffer from anxiety, and severe anxiety, severe panic attacks, because of the trauma when you go through um, the war, all these things, especially as a little kid, that really affects your brain. So I remember as a little girl, the only way that I would find comfort was through stories. And my mum was a great storyteller. She loved reading a lot. So I would sit on her laps and I would tell her, tell me a story. And Cinderella was my favourite. I don't know why, but I would say, tell me the one with the girl that loses her shoe. Um, or then she would tell me a Bible story. And I just loved that because it was a way that I could forget, a way that I could hide um, the pain. Um, and as the years went by, I realized that I loved to write. That was my passion, and, and I wanted to bring that kind um, of peace and joy, I guess, and maybe other kids who were suffering from the same thing as I was, um, bring, them th th bring them through it by stories. But um, as I was getting older, I realized that um, maybe the books that I was reading weren't that great because I started going into books with, you know, spirits and haunted houses and the scarier it was, the better it was for me. And then I started wanting to write that. I thought, this is what I want to write. I want to leave a legacy. And what kind of legacy do you leave with that kind of literature? And God was wrestling. He was chasing me. But I kept running away because I was reading these books. I was still... Like, church girl. Um, but I was reading these books and I was thinking, why am I going to write for Christians? Or oh, Christian books? That's boring. I, I don't even read them myself. Um, and that was the mentality that I had. But God didn't give up on me. He chased me. And one day my mom told me some really uh, loving truth as I was driving. And I said, you know, um, I had another rejection of, of my manuscript. Um, and she, she talked to me. She does everything in a loving way. And she speaks such truth. Uh, but she leaves you thinking, you know, when they plant that seed and just bothers you the whole week. And that's what happened. And I went into this um, battle. You could say I could feel that God was pulling me to him. And I could feel that the devil was saying, what are you going to write? You're not good enough to, to write for me. I want you to keep writing while you're writing. But one day God did um, win the battle and I surrendered. And it was after that that God gave me the privilege of um, working and writing some things for um, a devotional, a Bible study for teen girls, which was amazing. And then God just guided me that way. And when I wanted to keep writing and Steph came, we finished with the magazine and everything, I wanted to still keep writing and I wanted to tell others about God through stories, because that's what I find my joy in. And so God gave me the podcast. And then Steph came along and helped me with that. And now I can say, I want to live, not my legacy, I want to live God's word in children's heart, in teen girls, because that's the only thing that's going to really comfort us, bring us comfort that we have Jesus in our heart. And so it's been amazing where God is um, leading and taking it. But I'll let Steph continue. So um, actually, this time last year, we were standing right here um, as well. And um, we're here again, and God has blessed these 12 months amazingly. So our Little Kids podcast has um, over 120,000 downloads, and that's been a huge blessing. Um, we get emails from kids living in England, Costa Rica, USA, Austria, and other countries. Um, we also launched Gigi Teen Radio for Teen Girls um, this year in March, and we did a daily episode for girls to start the day with God, you know. Sometimes we find it hard to connect, so listen to it, get in the car, on the bus, however you get to school or work, um, and we wanted the girls to do that. So we started that, and we've done 112 episodes, so that was a big blessing as well. 
We also did a Gigi rally in partnership with Mangrove, Mangrove at Church. And we had about 80 girls and mums attend that, and that was also another big blessing. We celebrated our 10-year anniversary of when Gigi was actually founded, and we couldn't believe it's been going uh, for so long. We also printed um, a 20-page magazine for teen girls in April this year, and we do have some today, but Esther will tell you about that later. Um, and also, the biggest one I think that's happened is one of our team members has resigned from work and is working on full-time ministry, um, but I'll let Esther tell you about that. Yes, so I still remember the day as if it was yesterday, but on the 26th of uh, June this year, God said, it's time. There was no warning. There was nothing. I wasn't prepared, but he said, it's time. It's time for you to step into full-time ministry. And, you know, <laughs> before, like years ago, we used to think about one of us has to do ministry one day because it's very hard to, to dedicate yourself to two things fully, to do your work, uh, things you love. I loved my work. And then to do the ministry, which I loved as well. But you can only give so much. And so God was saying it's time because I don't know where he's taking it, but he's got plans. Um, and so he said to me, you need to take that leap. And I had been working at the school for 17 and a half years. This was at the end of this year, would have been my 18th. But God had other plans. If it was in my plans, I would have said, neatly end at the end of the year and step down that way, you know, leave everything ready. But in the middle of the year, just at the beginning of term three, it just didn't make sense to me. Um, and last year, I was hugely inspired by uh, Wes Turlhurst. He talked about stepping into ministry full time and it was just encouraging and I talked to him about it. But it, there was that fear, complete fear. I'm thinking, oh yeah, there's no way I'm going to do this. One of the girls will have to do it because I'm afraid. I'm afraid of taking that step. But when God said in June, this is time, I had no fear at all. The confidence, the security, um, the, just that peace that he gives you and you know it's from him. And I had to take that step. And it has been now, this is actually my fourth uh, month doing full-time ministry. It's been quite an adventure. It's huge. My days are like from 8.30 to 7.30 p.m. Um, but if, if I wasn't tired, I wouldn't stop. But I have to go to sleep sometime. But God has just been amazing. And that, that fear of not having a, an income, um, the security of a paycheck, nothing bothers me. And I tell you, if God has asked you to do that, he will provide. Somehow he has his ways. Um, so there are amazing things coming in 2022 and some things that have started now. Um, and I'm just going to get Steph to explain a little bit about where God is taking the ministry. So um, for next year, God has impressed us and just put this love, this seed in our heart. Um, to do an audio library for children where they can listen to Bible stories, chapter books, biographies, devotionals, short stories, and more. So we want this safe environment for them where, you know, they can, we can lessen their anxiety, but also let them grow spiritually. You know, parents don't need to worry what they're listening to because it's all going to um, help and uplift them. Now, these books, um, we actually just released a bundle, and that was such a big thing. It was an amazing blessing. But um, we actually got them professionally narrated and edited. And the pricing of each book individually was over $300 each um, to produce. And that, that was a bit of a, a big step for us. But we said, no, you know, we want God's word to be presented beautifully and be the best quality. So, you know, we went ahead. We did it. Um, they're available now. And they are the lovely, beautiful books that your kids will definitely enjoy. Uh, the other one we have is a teen ebook library. So we've actually found out and we've researched that there are paid and free ebooks and blog content with um, explicit material that girls are now accessing. And it's leaving them spiritually, emotionally and physically uh, just depressed. They are just drowning themselves with, I think, everything happening in this content that is not helping them at all. So we want to create this ebook library for the girls. 
um, that's going to have Bible stories of women of the Bible. It's going to have true stories of teen girls, modernised Bible stories, devotionals, and, and so much more. And we want to have this for our girls so they can be enriched and feel that hope that is lacking at the moment. So we actually have a sneak peek of two covers coming out. So we've got Mrs Potiphar and the Samaritan woman at the well. So these are beautiful stories that really let them walk in the Bible and see how God works and how no matter what your past or what your temptations, you can fight that with God. And we want them to rely solely on him. So this is one of the projects we have um, in mind for next year. So we'll continue with the podcasts as well um, for, the two, for the girls and their children. Uh, the other thing is, if you would like to help or be part of the ministry, you can. There are different ways that you can do it. Uh, one of them is you can spread the word and let, and let others know about um, what we have available for children and what we have available for teen girls. Uh, you can also buy um, the audiobook or the ebooks when they come. Uh, and we need your prayers because there's always um, challenges in the way, but we would love uh, your prayers. You could also get uh, the little magazine which we're going to give to the girls if you're between 12 and 16 come and see us and we'll give you one of these today uh, but if you have like carols at your church coming or um, you want to give it as a, a little welcome we've got a church at the moment a lady sponsored some and she's giving them to the teen girls that come to visit on the sabbath so they're using it as an outreach uh, ministry the other thing is this is our fundraiser month and if you would like to give as little as one dollar you are welcome a dollar actually goes a long way in a ministry as you in ministry would know um, but uh, you can find out more on um, on our website uh, or how you can help and please we ask that you pray and just before i finish i'd like to finish with this um bible verse uh excuse the Names, I can't pronounce them in Spanish or in English in this Bible word, so it'll be difficult. But um, I loved this, and this is for all the creatives. Exodus 31, 1 to 6 says, Then the Lord said to Moses, See, I have chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, the son of her, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God, with wisdom, with understanding, with knowledge, and with all kinds of skills to make artistic designs for work in gold, silver, and bronze, to cut and set stone, to work in wood, and to engage in all kinds of craft. Moreover, I have appointed Heliab, son of Asi, Ahisamak, of the tribe of Dan, to help him. Also, I have given him ability to all the skilled workers to make everything that I have commanded you. So the skills and the knowledge and the wisdom that you have in your gift is a gift from God. It all comes from him, and he says it here clearly. He gives us that. It's not from us. So if you have a dream today, if you have a ministry that you want to start and pursue, take it to God, because impossible is where God begins. May he bless you.